All right, we don't have a blank at the end of the passage. Make sure you read the question to make sure that you know what they want. In this case, they want us to support the conclusion, which seems very logical. That's usually what we're doing, but sometimes they say weaken, so you got to be careful. So let's just take a look at the paragraph and see if we can get that conclusion out of there. Aerial robots vary considerably in their holding force. The ultra-fast robot hand, for example, has a holding force of 56 newtons, more than twice that of the permanent magnet hand, and more than four times that of the Yale Model T. Ugh. Since an aerial robot must lift its own weight along with its cargo, engineer Jiawei Meng and colleagues used a ratio of each robot's holding force to the robot's body, the robot's weight to calculate payload capacity, with higher ratios corresponding to greater capacity, concluding that the ultra-fast robot hand has a higher payload capacity than the Yale Model T. So uh, that's this one and this one. So we've got the weights are here, right? So they talked about a lot of different things here, right? They talked about, so the, the ultra fast, ultra fast has a higher capacity, is greater capacity than the Yale Model T. Um, okay, so uh, just looking at the chart, they seem about the same, right? So I have a feeling we're going to need to understand this ratio thing, a ratio of each robot's holding force to the robot's weight. So uh, force over weight is gonna be what contributes to that. Oh, uh, okay. So, I don't know, let's take a look, let's take a little choices. Um, we need to support that conclusion. So the ultra fast robot hand and the Model T each weigh more than 450 grams. So if they weighed the same, which is true, uh, that would suggest that they would have the same capacity, right? I, I would think, because we would say, we, we were, and again, we're saying they're the same, but we want something that I guess is telling us that they're different. Um, Oh, oh, and they give us the holding forces here. Um, so the ultra fast has a higher, yeah, has a holding force of 56 newtons, more than twice the permanent magnet hand, which I don't care about, and more than four times the Model T. So they do say it here, ugh, I'm running out of space, that the ultra, what is it? <laughs> the ultra fast robot hand has a greater uh, uh, holding force than the Yale yeah, Model T. So there's force, there's capacity. This is like a math question. Oh my goodness. Um, so if they each weighed the same, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, who cares? I don't care if they weigh more than 250 grams, I guess. I don't, I, I just don't see why that matters. I guess I'm trying to compare them in some other way. I don't know. Let's just leave it. Look at B. The ultra, ultra fast robot hand and the Yale Model T each way more than the permanent. Okay. The, ma the magnet hand thing is not in this. Let's just get rid of that. I don't care. It wasn't in the conclusion. So get rid of it. Um, C. The Yale Model T has a lower holding force than the permanent magnet hand. Nope. I don't care about the permanent magnet hand. Just wasn't part of this. So not, not, notice how easy it is to cross out two answers, even though we didn't quite understand a lot of what's going on. We at least understood that the comparison is the ultra fast, ultra whatever, and the Yale Model T. So that's good. D, the ultra fast robot hand weighs only slightly more than the Yale Model T does. Okay. So why would that matter? Well, if they, they does that, first of all, is that true? Ultra fast robot hand does weigh only slightly more than the Yale Model T. Um, and so that's, that's true. So both of these are true. So which one is going to support their conclusion? Their conclusion was what? Uh, concluding the ultra fast robot hand has a higher payload capacity than the Model T. So if they both have the same weight, right, or, or similar, so only slightly more. So uh, yeah, like the, mm, similar, I'm going to do that. But the higher force here goes to the UF. So UF wins in the force, then that's going to have a higher capacity because you're dividing by the same thing. Um, so I don't care that the weight is more than 450 grams. I care that the weights are actually like uh, the same. So uh, that's kind of the opposite of what I said originally, but I want to be able to compare them. And there's this elaborate math equation that they're kind of making us do here. We don't have to calculate anything, but we, we kind of have to understand the equation. And so if the forces on the top of that fraction are different, but the bottoms are kind of the same, then the result of that fraction, the result of that equation is going to be different. And so that's the key is where do we, where their conclusion is that the capacity for the UF is going to be so much higher. The reason it's higher is not because of the weight. It's because of the force. They told us all about the force in the paragraph here, right at the top. So what we're using here is we're, we're saying that because they have similar weights, 
it's the force that's going to matter. And so the capacity will be different because we're dividing different numbers by the same number. I don't like this question because that's a lot of math for a reading question, but there it is. That's kind of what we're supposed to do here. Um, and the, just saying that each weighs more than 450 grams is not quite going to cut it because if choice A were true, it could also be the case that the ultra fast robot hand is 451 grams and that the Yale Model T is 5,000 grams, in which case now that capacity equation is going to be very, very different, right? Those are two very different numbers. So we're putting in two different forces. We're putting in two different weights. The capacity is going to start to change in weird ways. We don't want that. So choice D is letting us kind of keep almost like what I would consider a control, right? Something that's the same between them. That allows us to measure other things that are changing. This is a very weird question because so much of the work comes out of that paragraph. Um, hopefully you kind of made my dumb summaries kind of made some sense here. They made sense to me, but notice that I kind of kept adding to those dumb summaries as I went. I think that is a really good lesson to take away. Is this a hard question? I did not go in with a clear vision of what I'm going to do. I mean, when I make these videos for you guys, I try not to know the answer beforehand so I can kind of teach it to you the way that I would have seen it on the test. And so in this case, I had to make a lot of adjustments and go back and look at things. That's normal for some hard questions. So if you don't know everything the first time through, that's okay. Neither do I, but we have to be able to adjust. We have to recognize we've got some confusion and, and say, okay, I got to go back and check for this thing. What is it that they're really saying? What's some stuff that I ignored before that I didn't think that was going to matter, but it actually does. Happens to me all the time. Not often, not, not every test, like are we getting many, many questions where I have to like go back, but certainly a few hard ones. So get used to it. That's just part of the way the SAT works. It's better to have a few questions you have to go back because you skipped over some information than to spend every single question looking at every single piece of information and trying to just, you know, you're going to just waste a lot of time trying to understand every single detail. Most questions you don't need to. This question you did, it happens.